Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up, subscribe to this family-friendly movie and television show review channel, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Now I do have to say, almost 90% of you that are watching are not subscribing, so I encourage you to please subscribe. In this video, we have Greenleaf Season 5, Episode 6, entitled The Sixth Day. Now, now for the newbies, I do a recap of the entire episode with photos for those that don't have the channel. And then I give my review and opinions at the end. No need to search around. I have all of the minute marks in the comments. It's all coming up next. Bishop is very upset and he's speaking with an FBI agent because he feels that Rochelle was not only a person that caused him and his family harm, but that he should have been notified, letting him know that she was in his vicinity. Meanwhile, Lady May is telling him, hey, you've got to hurry up and get off that phone because you have an appointment with the doctor. Grace comes down the stairs and learns that her dad is speaking with an FBI agent, Agent Doulas. And it's the same agent that oversaw the embezzlement case concerning Jacob and Lady May tells Bishop that hey if you're going to make this appointment with the doctor you've got to leave now Bishop says to her that you know her roaming around the city is just awkward and Lady May says yes she's roaming around the city like she owns it and she has a key to a city I understand that you know that's causing you some interest but you got to get your physical Lady May wants Grace to make sure that her father gets to the doctor because she has a meeting with Tara and she wants to give her a chance to stay her peace because she claims that she had no idea that Rochelle was back but Bishop just thinks that Tara wants the house and she's saying any and everything to convince them that the house belongs to her he's not going to the doctor instead he wants to go to the club to meet with the city inspector to prepare for the future he's not having it grace gets a call from Darius and he's calling her from a new number because he lets her know that his phone and his laptop was stolen out of his room while in Vegas Darius wants to know if Grace still has the escrow files um, that contain pictures and photos from Kerr County. And Grace says, yeah, I think I still have those emails. And she excludes herself from her mother's presence. And of course, Lady May is very curious and wants to know what this conversation is all about. As Grace goes up to her room and asks Darius where he would like the emails forwarded, they are slowly beginning to delete right in front of her eyes she tells him that hey my emails are deleting everything and they keep decreasing and decreasing and she says the emails they're all gone charity comes home to find a strange man at the gate and the audience knows that it's yousef but she doesn't know and she asks the gentleman um excuse me sir can i help you with something and he lets her know no i'm actually here to help you Carissa and Jacob, they get dressed and Carissa tells him, hey, we're going to have this meeting to go into more detail for Winky, letting him know that we're getting a divorce. I don't want to talk about anything else. I don't want to talk about custody, custody, anything. And Jacob says, of course, we're just going there to inform Winky. And he says, but I also think that I should get joint custody as well. But Carissa says, it's not going to happen. Yusef and Charity meet Grace and he lets her know that, hey, this reporter that you want me to talk to, he better be legit. Everything that I say needs to be off the record. I have a good reputation and I want to stay under the radar. And he even lets her know that I know it was you I hung up on, but I'm not apologizing. And Grace makes a joke saying that, yep, you are Phil's father. Zora calls Sophia over to help her with an audition recording. She wants her to help set up the camera, make sure that the tripod is set up correctly. And as Sophia helps her to set up the camera, a flight alert pops up confirming a flight to New York. And she doesn't have anywhere to stay, but wants to wing where she's going. And Zora claims that the divorce between both of her parents is giving her clarity. And she has to make this move to New York and she has to go for a school that she wants to go to. But it's obvious that she's running and she's angry. She's trying to go as far away from the situation and her parents as possible. Darius updates Grace, Yousef, and Charity of all of the information he's collected so far and all of the information leading up 
to when his laptop and cell phone was stolen. And he says, well, one, Bob Whitmore in the 80s owned Edenville Lending. And Youssef says, but that's great. But anybody that does a little research can find that out. And he says, well, he sold second mortgages to people who needed cash. And when they couldn't do the bloom payments, they he took their houses. And Youssef shines light on something very specific. He goes, well, he's doing it to specific individuals. Think about who. Think about who he took advantage of. He took advantage of poor black families. And Phil's mom thought that this was the shining light, this Edenville lending. It was the answer to help black folks out and getting financial help that they needed in order to keep their homes. Meanwhile, Bob was the evil mastermind b behind it all. And Darius really wants Yusef to go on record and talk to Phil, but he refuses. He wants to continue to keep a low profile. And Yusef says, you know, well, if you can find one person, one name to back up all of your findings and what I'm saying, then I'll give the confirmation. Charity wants Yusef to talk to Phil about everything because he needs to know the truth about the mother. And Yusef says that he'll only be in town for a few more days. That's fine. And he's glad that they had a chance to talk. And he has to hit the road. After he leaves, Grace also says to Darius that AJ is now on his meds and she needs to meet up with her son. And Darius wants her to just think about them and the future as a couple. Tara tells Lady May she has no ill intentions and didn't know, she had no idea about Rochelle and what she's doing for all that she knew that she was in Mexico and had no idea that she made a side deal with the FBI. Tara also says that the house is evident that it's destined to help people, but if they can't come to a conclusion about the house and everything that's going on peacefully, it's not destined and it's not meant to be. And Lady May agrees with her and lets her know that the house is still hers, no matter what she thinks. Sophia requests to speak with Carissa to talk. And it's evident she's kind of interrupted their conversation and where they're heading. Once she gets in the room, Sophia says, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I really needed to talk to you. And it's not about me. It's about Zora. The contractor informs Bishop that there are several codes that need to be completed before opening the bar. These codes are important because if you're planning on having people in this building for worship, everybody needs to be safe. The main focus is safety. And as they continue their conversation, Rochelle makes her presence known by interrupting their conversation. The contractor leaves and taunts Bishop and saying that she's slithering her way over there to just bully him and tells him that he needs to just speak his truth, tell the truth, stop lying. And it's obvious that her life is wonderful because God favors her. He's blessed her financially and look at his situation. Everything is falling through, the church, the house, everything. You're trying to restart in a bar and you have several codes to make, which will take so much time. Look at what you've done. Bishop says he has nothing to do with her father's death, but she ignores all of his statements. He even tells her, Rochelle, you are delirious and sick. As Grace and Noah wait on AJ concerning his treatment, speaking with the doctors, Grace says that she doesn't believe that the Negro or that Negro that kept being referred to in those journals by the past caretaker was in reference to Daryl and they need more evidence of other possible people. Grace wants him to know that how did he get AJ to take his meds? And Noah explains that, you know, what started it was that inspiration between him and Bishop concerning the car. I mean, he was really excited about that. AJ showed my mom photos of GTOs. He Googled a lot of information and he just couldn't wait to get started. He was looking at areas to rent out so they could build it. And it was just really, really exciting and you and excited. And you could tell Grace is disappointed that she couldn't bring that out of him. But she does acknowledge that 
I mean, yeah, I mean, you're impressionable on him. You're a man, you're his father and my father combined. I'm just happy that he agreed to taking his meds and to getting healthier. She accepts that. AJ comes out of treatment and kind of taunts them and saying, ooh, look at you. I see how I exist. Look at you two flirting. And this is interesting. And they share a little comical moment, some laughs. And Noah tells Grace that, he found a new place for him and AJ, and if her parents lose the house, she's always welcome to stay with them. Jacob and Carissa go to see Zora to talk with her, and it's very evident that Carissa is upset that she even thought about just leaving and going to New York, and Jacob takes a more understanding, calm approach, letting her know that, Zora, you're a young adult. No matter what we say, it's evident that you're going to do what you want. And you have the right to pursue your dreams and to do what you want to do. But he wants her to live her life planned and not to think with emotion. And he thinks that a thorough talking through and where she'll stay and what her plans are makes more sense. But he asked her to just give them more time a little bit more patience because they're going through the divorce and it's just so much happening instead of just winging it and just going out to new york he says look why don't you talk to your cousin we're gonna talk to your cousin that stays out there and you can just stay with her until school starts zora's upset that hobogan is not the exact location that she wanted to go to but Jacob's like, just think about it. You'll still be in that vicinity and you'll be close in that area. It makes more sense than just going out there and not knowing where you're going to stay, where you're going to live, just all of that. And Zora starts to put two and two together in her head and she agrees to the terms. Bishop is very upset and he's venting to Lady May that Rochelle just came to the bar to bully him. And Lady May says that she spoke with Tara and nothing seems to make sense. The first will, then the second will, how do they know which will is the correct one? I mean, I know that Aaron is saying that the second one is valid, but nothing just adds up. Like, have you ever thought about that? And Bishop says that, look... That woman gave the house to us. Why would this woman leave this house to, to Daryl? Like, it doesn't make any sense. And Lady May adds one more question. Why would she give it to us? Think about that. You're saying that they wouldn't leave it to Daryl, but why would she leave it to us? She didn't even go to our church. She's never been there. And did you even think about how this woman knew you before Mac? And Mac introduced you to this woman, and that was it? Like, that's unclear. Jacob comes in and asks if he can just have a moment. He's sorry that he interrupted, but he wants them to come down and say goodbye to Winky before him and Carissa go to her parents' house. And Lady May tells Jacob, you know, marry someone you love next time and stay faithful so you don't have to search for any type of normalcy. And Bishop gives her this look like, did she just say that? But Jacob leaves the room. And Bishop is just appalled by Lady May's statement. And he tells her that she has some nerve, that all the mistakes that he's made, everything, all of his mistakes have been broadcast on a blimp for everybody to see. But she needs to confess her own sins. She's telling everyone else how to live, but she's lied to the entire family for over 40 years. And he tells her, keep your holy admonitions to yourself. Phil and Judy, they go through some files and Judy says that I can't believe that these files are so clean. I mean, I underestimated Corinne's potential, but every piece of paper is just so clean and just in order. But they're interrupted by Charity's presence. Judy tells her that, hey, we know that you were in the building the other day and you need to turn in your keys as soon as possible. Charity drops the information that she brought a visitor and Phil sees his father and Phil is arrest. Jacob and Carissa have a much needed conversation. Carissa expresses that she's heard about the entire situation and she never thought that her marriage wouldn't be successful. It took a divorce for him to step up as a dad, for him to step up about expressing themselves and maybe that they never should have met in the first place. And Jacob says to her that 
He's happy that he met her. And it's unfortunate that they're getting a divorce. But we have to think about we got two beautiful children out of it. Look at our children. They can't be happy with them being as a couple, but it's obvious that we've got to pull together to co-parent. It is what it is. Carissa agrees and she's moved to tears about how he's gotten some sense pretty much. And she tells him that yes, they need to have shared custody of Winky. Yusef goes on to explain the situation of his mom and what happened between Enville Lindy and how she was used by Bob and how he needs to stop, wake up and think about it because he's going to make the same mistake. Judy denies all the claims and that it's not true and Phil threatens to call someone, but it's not Bob, it's the police. Phil says that his dad was never a dad and his mom worked long and hard hours and took care of the family like he was supposed to. And Charity pleads with Phil that he's only trying to help you and he never, never wants you to make the same mistakes twice and over and over again. And Phil says, you know what? I never want to see Yusuf, and he pronounces it incorrectly, ever again. And you could tell that Yusuf holds back tears before leaving. Charity tells Phil that she wants to pray for him. And sometimes people say that being sarcastic or saying that because they have ill intentions. But she says, no, I really want to pray for you because only God can help you now. The family sees off Carissa and she says her final goodbyes to Jacob. She even asks him, can I hug you? And he shares a hug with her and she even gives a hug to Carissa and the, the family sees her off and wishes her well. After Carissa leaves, Lady May says to the rest of the family, I have an announcement to make. And they all gather around. We then see Charity put, pull up and she's like, well, why is everybody standing around? What's going on? And Lady May says, Charity, I need you to be quiet while I tell everybody this important information. She says, you know what? There's something that I need to share with all of you and it's just really important. The information is that Grace is a product of an affair and she says that that won't hold back the future and what they have planned and that dinner is served at seven. And she turns around and walks into the house as if she said, nothing dramatic or nothing important later that evening charity jacob and grace they have a conversation and it's evidence that evident that they're a little tipsy and charity vents in her tipsy state that you know what this family is a plane crash i mean this family has this big house money and then you think you have to be this perfect person because your family seems to be perfect. But in actuality, this family is a plane crash. And they share some laughs and joke about how they always wonder how Grace was so much lighter than them anyway. And Jacob says, you know, what? no matter what mom said in this entire situation, you're my sister and you'll always be my sister. Grace thanks everybody for that. And Grace gets a call from Darius. Darius says that they have someone. They have someone that was on the list of names that wants to go on the record. Everything concerning Edenville Lending and that he needs to see her. Zora tells Sophia that, you know what? You know what you're called? And Sophia says, what, a cousin? She says, no, 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 a snitch. Because you went behind my back and you told my parents what I was going to do. And it's not really where I wanted to go. And now... My plans are changed. And Sophia is really puzzled as to why Zora isn't more angry than she expected her to be. And Zora says, well, you know, I'm not that upset because I told your mom about those photos. And Sophia goes, you're joking, right? She's like, no, 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 no. I told your mom about the photos. And I told her about this pic situation and that the situation was so bad. It's even making you reconsider going back to school. So now we're even. And Sophia sees that as fair and how important it is that when she shares information, only to share it when, with parents if it's necessary. 
Grace makes it over to Darius's house and she's knocking on the door, knocking on the door and she's not getting an answer. And she calls his phone and it automatically goes to voicemail. She's wondering where he is. And while knocking on the door and trying to figure out what's going on, there's a car that pulls up beaming its head headlights. And we see somebody get out of the car and it is Fernando. And he threatens her to stay out of it. And no one cares about journalists anymore. And to stay out of it and be careful. And he gets into his car and drives off. And Grace is shook as honey. And that is the end of the episode. So let's get straight to the inside scoop about how many episodes are left. Many people thought that there were only going to be seven episodes or six episodes. Well, a lot of networks know that they can limit how much information is left on an IMDb IMDb page, meaning that they don't want you go to go on there and get the synopsis of all of the episodes that are next because you can kind of predict how it's going to end and that just leaves the suspense at a dud. So actor Lamont Tucker left a statement on the Greenleaf Instagram page saying that, hey, only four episodes left, hashtag pray for Jacob, hashtag last season five of five or something along those lines. But I think that this was on purpose. Of course, it conjures up talk and why is it saying hashtag pray for Jacob? So that gets the excitement for everybody to pay attention and look at the last few episodes. Now, I don't know if that's four seasons left starting from episode six or starting from episode seven. Regardless, if it goes to nine episodes or 10 episodes, we do have a range and we have an idea when it all comes to an end. I think it's really, really important that people realize that there is a potential spinoff that's coming from the Green Leaf series. And if, if that's true, then four episodes being left does make sense. If not, if there's not a spinoff, it kind of leaves me with the energy that the writing is going to be rushed and everything's going to be thrown into the last two seasons, uh, episodes. I really think that the last two episodes should be two hours long or an hour and a half, something to give us more time to learn what's going on and where certain characters have left off and what they what they didn't conclude. So there's a lot. I mean, can you do that in four episodes? Yeah. If the writing is precise and if it gives detail and it makes sense, you can't just throw everything and flop everything together, okay? Ask a very strong Game of Thrones fan here, okay? But anyway, I thought that was really interesting, so tell me what you think about that. Oh my goodness, that scene when Carissa was leaving the house. I was like, goodbye, Ariva Durchy, like Martin says to Pam, Ariva Durchy, peace, kick rocks, get on your tea, get out, bye, peace out, send a signal in the sky, get the Uber, get the Lyft, bye. I was just, oh, stage left, close the curtain, stick a fork in her. I was so done. I don't know why I just felt that way. I was just on the couch, wanted to clap when she left. I mean, I'm not happy that the characters were getting a divorce, but it was just like, girl from season one. Oh, <sighs> she's out of here. Oh, can, 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 can we, can we, can we just, can we just breathe again? Breathe again. No, nah, no, nah. can we just, and I can't stop thinking about, woo, from seasons one to three. No, I can't stop thinking about. Okay, for real, let's get serious. All right. So it was very interesting that Agent Dulles, Dulles, I hope I'm saying that name correctly, from the FBI, it was very interesting that he handled the same situation. He was the same agent that handled the embezzlement case concerning Jacob. And he handled, like, the situation with Rochelle. It's evident that he was hired to investigate that family. I mean, you, you're not just an agent from my understanding, uh, reading mystery novels and looking at stuff on TV that you can't just assign yourself to any case. So whoever is the superior to him, obviously wanted him to follow up and to get information and to investigate. So I found that very interesting. This writing of Greenleaf 
it's just amazing in it proving its point that the male presence is very important when it comes to family. That father put the foot down, bass in your chest, voice that comes from a father is that assertiveness that children need, okay? And it was very refreshing to see Jacob take a very calm, understanding, okay, let's think about it stance with Zora. It was refreshing because Carissa was very upset with her as any mother, as any parent should, but he thought about it. He's like, wait a minute, she's grown. She's a young adult. We can't keep her captive here. We can't lock her up. She's gonna make decisions on her own. The best thing that we could do is step in as parents and have her think it out and make the most sense of it. So whatever goals and dreams that she's ha that she has, she can make good decisions and she could be safe and know that she's not just winging it going to such a big city like New York. So kudos to Jacob. A big round of applause for Charity, finally doing something again for the family and bringing Yousef to the situation, to meet Grace, to meet Darius. But then again, it is another red flag for me. Did Charity pull the trigger too soon? She's done this several times in a row. She's, one example, when she talked to Phil about what they know and what we have and being so confident a few days before the demolition, she shouldn't have said anything to Phil about that. And also bringing Yousef to Phil so soon and letting Yousef spill the beans in front of Judy concerning Eaton Bell lending. It's like, Charity, no, don't show your cards just yet. Yeah, you're giving them the head start on what you know. You know, when you know some information like that, you got to just spill it at the right moment. Like, bam, bet you didn't know I knew that. Ha <laughs> ha, how you like me now? But Charity, girl, you be spilling the beans a little bit too soon. You get a point and a half for helping, but I still don't like it. And girl, I think you pulled the trigger too soon and it's going to backfire. Yeah. I knew Darius was in danger. I said that in the last couple of reviews that he's going to Vegas with all of this important information. I knew something was up. I felt like Whoopi and Ghost, like, Darius, you in trouble, boy. I mean, I know you huge and you tall and everything like that, but man, you, you got all this information. You just want to roll to another city by yourself? That didn't make sense. And the way that those emails just disappeared, that is a clear sign of some IT approved tapping or, 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 or spying FBI privilege type of stuff. For somebody to do that live deletion like that, that's, that's, that has FBI written all over it. And it's clearly people that are either tapping phones, looking into computers. Fernando was already outside waiting on her. They're looking at everybody. They're watching everyone. And I hope that Darius is okay. Cause you know, Rick Fox fine. Okay, let me stop. Do I think Tara is really the innocent sibling that doesn't know anything? No, I do think that she is aware of certain sneaky things that Rochelle and Basie that they're doing. I don't think Basie is dead. I think he's alive and well. And I don't think she had ill intentions and really honestly didn't know that Rochelle was gonna pop up. But the fact that you are constantly calling her and giving her information, ooh, you look a little, you look a little suspicious. And also Rochelle, do me a favor, girl. Get some business. Where is Bob? Where is Mavis? Where they at? I think they kicking it together. I think that Bob and Mavis maybe got some underlying stuff going on. I, don't know, I know that don't make sense, but it's drama. Think drama. I don't know. I'm reaching. But where they at? It is very interesting to me that Bishop didn't put two and two together about getting that house. Like, I mean, think about it, right? Let's just say randomly that somebody you knew in your family says, hey, I really want you to meet somebody. You, you, you just a first time meeting them. And then you learn that they done left you a house or something. That's not suspicious. You don't know this person. You just willy dilly just taking a whole literally plantation property 
come on now that's not a regular old, old house that's like that's 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 a whole neighborhood what they got they got a lake they got everything what was the episode of martin <laughs> when barnell hill was talking about his prom oh got a lake catfish and everything <laughs> let me stop but yeah it was just interesting that bishop you never thought about that like i wouldn't even accept clothes from a person that passed away like that and they're like oh here you go and that's all i need to wake up in the middle of the night in my homes from some ghost clothes in the corner to my i'm savage <clears throat> and see i'm like oh burn the clothes burn the house down and the demon that's inside Boop, don't want it send it back return to sender mm -mm. come on bishop you know better than that but i mean you know you think about it like man i don't know who that is but i'll accept the house but it didn't cross your mind once, Bishop. Come on. It makes sense to me that Fernando is on the tail because he works for Bob and he's on the tail of so many people and he was waiting and watching Darius and that he knew possibly that Grace was gonna show up. Cause you gotta remember, Fernando is over a lot of the uh, real estate information and corporations that Bob has. So, and you gotta remember that Carissa was helping him get information about the home because she was so upset, remember? So now he has information about that. And I think that Fernando has been doing that digging since that episode where Carissa was telling him all this information because she was so upset and so angry. And he's probably thinking about his money too. Like, man, I got this real estate company or companies and I've done all of this bad, dirty work for Bob. Like nobody's gonna take this away from me. So mm, not surprised that it was Fernando because now we're talking about real estate now we're talking about email lending and all of the bad stuff that he's done so I wasn't as surprised at all to see his face let me know what you think please list your comments below I get a lot of people DMing me on Instagram telling me what they think don't be shy go ahead and put your comments in the comments section I love to read you guys's ideas I absolutely love it and I love to hear your predictions and what everybody is saying and as a matter of fact I'm gonna do something new I'm gonna send a shout out of either who was first, I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna send a shout out in every video. Now I'm gonna do it at the beginning, okay? This is at the end of this video, but I'm gonna do it starting episode seven. I'm gonna, at the beginning, I'm gonna state who the person was to make not only the first comment, but which comment had the longest thread in replies, okay? So I'm gonna do that now. I hope that you guys love this recap and review. Let me know your thoughts. Be safe, be careful, do not undermine COVID-19. Please be precautious, but not fearful. In the meantime, be safe. I love you guys, and I'll see you for more videos. Bye.